In this video tutorial, we're going to take a step back from sign distance fields and take a look at how we can array march a texture in depth using HLSL. This can give us the possibility of making so many interesting effects like what we see here, giving us the illusion of depth really when it's all just being mapped on a simple flat plane. Let's take a look at how we can create this effect in Unreal using HLSL. So to begin, we're just going to create a brand new material. So I'm just going to go in here to, and right click in my content browser and go to materials, material, and I'll call it Ray March. And inside that material, we're going to create a brand new custom node and connect it up to a miss missive color for now. And I can give it a name if I want, but I'll just leave it as the custom node. And then what we're going to do is type in some code to start setting up our texture, our custom texture that we're going to want to plug in and ray march in depth. So to type this code, I'm just going to jump on over into Visual Studio so we can see the code a little bit easier. And to pretty much start doing this, the first thing we have to do is pretty much set up our ray marching. So I'm going to create a float3 variable called ray step and just make that equal our view direction times negative one. And then what we're going to do is create another variable, but this time a float for called input text or input texture. And that will equal a texture 2D sample. And that's going to allow us to create pretty much a, a texture object or a texture node to some extent. If you think of Unreal and you think of a texture sampler node, this is pretty much what we're assigning to this variable. And inside that kind of texture 2D sample, we're going to need our texture object, the information of the actual texture, and then our sampler, so texture object sampler. And you can name these whatever you want. It could be text object, it could be t text or t map or whatever you want to call it, as long as they're both following that name. So if I were to change this to like uh, text, then this would have to be text sampler. But in this case, we're just doing text object, and that means this has to be text object sampler. And then what we have to do is define the UV coordinates or the UVs, so I'll just type UV, and that is pretty much it. That gives us now a texture that we can load in and store as this variable. So now we have our ray step and our texture. So the next thing that we want to do now is do a bit of a for loop so that we can step through in depth and draw these ray march textures at different depth. So what we'll do is say for and we'll do int i equals zero. If i is less than 25, i plus plus. So right now I'm just doing 25, which means 25 slices. It's going to loop through this 25 times and create 25 individual texture slices in depth and that will pretty much be how many times this texture gets duplicated in depth. If I want less slices I could just change this number here but I think 25 will be a good amount to give us some good distance and to make it look uh, pretty solid and not, not have too many gaps in between it. So then I'll open up this loop and what we'll do now is we'll check this texture. So we'll take a look at this texture and we're assuming that this texture is going to be a black and white mask where maybe the white areas are the things uh, that keep the information that actually draw the slice and anything that's black in that texture or below a certain value uh, in lumience or brightness will just end up getting kind of clipped away. So what we're going to do to mask out brighter lumens or higher values is we're just going to do if, and then we'll take our texture here, input text. If the red channel is greater than 0 0.1, and if the blue channel or green channel is greater than 0 0.1, and blue channel is greater than 0 0.1, then what we'll do is return a color. 
and I'm just going to make it red. And I'm going to use I variable for the red color. That way, when each slice gets drawn in depth, it's becoming brighter and brighter in red. So it gives us a bit of a gradient. If I just leave this as like one for red or one red, one green, one blue, then it's just going to draw a bunch of perfectly um, bright white slices and it won't look like it has any shading or any detailing. So what I'm going to do is draw it as red and that red value will increase with, with each slice that it draws and it will go higher than values of one but I'm going to plug this into the emissive slot of our material so it'll end up glowing and give us a really neat effect. So we'll do that for our masking out anything that's above a certain lumens or, or darkness value on our texture. And after doing this, the very last thing we'll have to do after we draw this slice and return the color is we'll have to step our UV. So what we'll do is we'll do UV plus equal, so it's adding on to the current value, and we'll add on our ray step times 0 0.15. Now, what this 0 0.15 value is, is pretty much just gonna be like a multiplier for the distance in between the slices. So if you want more distance or more bigger gaps in between these 25 slices that we're drawing, you will have to increase this value here. But I think 0 0.15 should give us a good distance for now, but that's how you would be able to adjust the distance in between each slice that it ray marches in depth. And then finally, we'll have to take our texture again, so input text, and we'll make that equal our texture 2D sample use our texture object, which we'll talk about in a, a little little bit, and then we'll do our texture object sampler. So pretty much the same thing we did up here. The only difference is the UV now is not just going to be UV, it's going to be UV but only in X and Y, like that, UV.XY. And that is pretty much it. And what this is going to do is, is pretty much just sample the texture for the new slices in depth. So in kind of that direction only. And this is pretty much all of our code. Aside from the very end, after this for loop, we'll have to return the total value. So let's return input text. So we'll turn the return the final result of everything. And that is pretty much it. Now to get this working, I'm going to take all this. It's not that many lines of code. So you don't need a ton of line, lines of code to do some simple ray marching. And we'll go into Unreal, and I'll paste that code into my custom node here. And now we have to define our inputs because we're going to get a ton of errors saying, you know, we're missing all these, these different types of things. So what, what do we need here? We need our view direction. Uh, we need our texture object, and we need our UV coordinates. So I'm going to add three inputs here. The first one is going to be maybe our UVs. Uh, the second one I'm going to call our texture object. And remember, I'm using the word texture object because that's what we have here for our texture 2D sampler. For the actual texture information we're plugging in to our texture 2D sample. So we'll have to connect that up to an actual texture and I'll go over how we can do that. But finally, before we, we go any further, we also have to add our view direction to get the camera vector. So view direction, we connect to our camera vector. UV, we connect to our texture coordinate. And then finally, our texture object, the texture we're wanting to ray march in depth is going to be a texture. Now you don't want to use a texture sample. We've already kind of defined that inside of here. Uh, we just need the texture information without the UV attached to it. So if we create a texture sample that has like UV and all this stuff, we don't want that. Now you technically could take this texture sample and right click and convert it to a texture object. That will work. Or what you can also do is right click and just create a texture object. And then we get a texture object. 
and we will specify some sort of texture or select a texture here. Ideally, in this case, for how we set up our code, it's going to take out values uh, brighter than a certain level, like brighter than 10% gray, and use that as a way of masking what areas get drawn and what areas kind of just stay dark or don't have any color uh, added to them. So in this case, I'm going to use a black and white mask. I'm just going to search here. I have this little text here, black and white mask, and I will connect that up. And what we get now is our illusion where it has those slices drawn in depth. So this is really cool. And if we go in here, just to go over a little bit of a, a tour of, of changing things around, if, if we made our for loop, not uh, i is less than 25. If we did i is less than 5, well, then we only get 5 slices in depth, and then it stops. If we do i is less than 50, then we're going to get 50 slices in depth. And if we see right now, there's a good-sized gap in between those slices that we're drawing. If we want to make that gap smaller or larger. Again, we'd modify the UV plus ray step multiplied by that multiplier that will change the gap in between there. So if I did multiplied by 0 0.15, which is what we currently have, we get that. If I do ray step multiplied by 0 0.1, well, then we're going to get a smaller distance. If I do ray step times 0, 0.0, Two five, then we have a really small gap in between those slices, and from far away it feels way more solid. Now you can use this effect for so many different things, but it gives us a really cool illusion where even on a flat surface like this ground, it can give the illusion that there's some sort of hole or indent into the ground. So there's a lot of flexibility to create some really interesting illusions with these kind of ray marched textures in depth. They're totally a camera trick, but they allow you to do some really fun things really easily. So we'll take a look next in our upcoming videos of how we can add some animation where each slice of this ray marched texture in depth could be moving a different way or how we can kind of vary the colors or add some additional kind of ways of making this a little bit more interesting. But if you found this video helpful and you've liked the content that's being covered covered in this video, please like, please subscribe. And if you're part of the Patreon, you will also be able to get access uh, to the PDF for this lesson where it will just go over all the steps of creating this Ray March texture in depth. So definitely check that out if you are part of the Patreon.